Morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School and I just returned yesterday from the Pathfinder Gathering. Prior to that I was finishing up filming a new television series that's set to air for September. I'm not at liberty to release any information about that at this point still because the channel has not released the show yet and when it's going to air, but I should know something within the next couple weeks on that. In the meantime, I wanted to pass on a few of the skills and techniques that were taught at the gathering by my instructors as well as other folks at the gathering because it's a large gathering of people, about 250 people were there, just passing on and teaching each other skills and learning from each other as well as certain classes that are put on by the Pathfinder School throughout the week-long event that we had at Rocky Fork State Park in Hillsboro, Ohio. We'll get next year's gathering posted up as quick as we can so you guys can get information on that as well. Next year's gathering is going to be limited to 300 people because we're starting to get more people than we can handle in the camp area that we have leased or rented for that event at Rocky Fork State Park. So we have to limit it to 300 people and we were right at 250 this year. We expect it to be bigger next year. It gets bigger just about every year. So we're going to have to limit ticket sales to probably right around 200 because we've got about 100 people there between kids that people bring for free that aren't really registered guests or tickets sold and then our staff, security and instructors and things like that make up the balance of that. So we'll probably only sell about 200 tickets for the gathering next year. Now, one of the things that was taught at the gathering this year <clears throat> by my good friend Tony Daniels was how to make uh, several different types of brooms. And I think that any home skill or soft skill that you can learn is an important skill. And the ability to make a broom is a very important skill. Brooms have been used, you know, throughout time to clean everything from caves to cabins. And in the 1700s, brooms became very popular in the U.S. And there were people that made brooms all the time, and that was their living. And one of the things that was used very commonly to make brooms with was a plant called sorghum, also known as broom corn. And the top of that plant pretty much looks like this, and it has a stalk that's cut off here that's almost like a corn stalk. And then you have the top of the plant here that's used to make the broom. And I've got a bunch of those tops soaking over here that have been cut off. You can buy this stuff on the internet or you can grow it yourself and sorghum is a very good crop for lots of things other than just broom making. So I would encourage you to do some research on sorghum as a agricultural crop on your homestead. But today we're going to use it to make a turkey wing hearth broom. And anytime you're using material like this to make brooms, to do weaving with, to make pine needle baskets, to make cordage, all those natural plant materials and fibers should really be soaked in water prior to use to keep them pliable and flexible. So I've had this broom corn soaking for about two hours now in water and now we're getting ready to tie up a broom, a hearth broom, that's called the turkey wing style hearth broom. I'm going to show you how to make that. We're going to use a real simple tool. It doesn't take a lot of tools to make most brooms. I have a Mora carving knife on my neck. I have some number 12 bank line, any nylon cord will work for this. I like using bank line because it's something I have in my kit all the time. It's very flexible as far as its usability. And then I have an Osage dog bone here, for lack of a better word, that you put underneath your feet and it, you wind your string around it you're using for your broom. It's a tensioning device for the cordage. So all I'm going to do is wrap some of this cordage on this dog bone. It's got a hole drilled through it. I'm just going to put one in through it and just start winding it around, just like this, wind it around the tail. And I want to give myself, you know, a pretty good amount of this on here because I don't want to run out during the process of making my broom. So I'll get this wound on here and we'll get, I don't know, as much as I feel like looking at on here until my hands get tired of winding the cord on here. And then we'll start to make our turkey wing hearth broom. Stay with me. Okay, so you can see our broom corn sitting in here floating in water, ready to be used. There's a few colored strands in here too from the Pathfinder gathering. We had some dyed broom corn that we were using at the gathering as well. And you can buy it dyed different colors or you can dye it yourself. OK, 
Okay, so the process for this is pretty simple. What we're going to do is we're going to take about five pieces of this broom corn and we want it all facing the same direction. So we want the tops of the stalks together like this. And we're going to put those together first. And we're going to come down, I don't know, close to three quarters of the way. And we'll put this T on the ground under our feet and it will unroll naturally and we can put our feet on top of it and that will allow us to tension our string. And then we're just going to take a wrap around here and put a half inch in it. Just like this. Come around and put another half hitch in it. So we put two half hitches in here now. And then we're just going to wrap around the tail. So I want to come up this direction. And I want to pull this fairly tight, but I also want to pay attention to my wraps because I want them to look neat. And I'm going to pay attention to how many times I wrap this around because I'm going to repeat that. So I've got four wraps on this bundle. Now I'm going to take a bundle that's the same size, whether that's three of these or four of these or whatever that is that the bundle becomes pretty close to the same size. Pull all the strands off of it, they're loose. And I'm going to stack that on top of this bundle, like this, and I'm going to come around and I'm going to wrap at about a 45 degree angle up, like this, and when I get to the point where I am flat, that's where I'm going to pull it tight. I'm going to ease up on it and only pull it when it's flat. I'm not going to pull it when it's sideways. I'm going to pull it when it's flat. That'll keep that broom fairly flat and then I want to ride right into that 45 degree angle that I created. And that's where I'm going to do my four wraps. And if I take pressure off of this thing, I can raise it up just like this. Keep those wraps nice and tight, pulling up whenever I'm sideways and relaxing a little bit when it's on the flat side. So this thing is kind of oblong right now. And I'm going to put four wraps on that just like I did on the last one. So I got four here, four here with a 45 degree angle here on top. And now I'm going to get another bundle and put it on top of this one. And again, I'm going to use about the same size material again. I'm going to lay it right even with it at the top it like this and then I'm going to turn it at a 45 degree angle over bring it up got a piece of black broom corn in here I'm going to get out of the way now I've got my 45 degree angle that matches this one I'm going to pull up to tighten it down on top just like that remember relax a little bit on the down get that lined up even so it looks the same as this one pull up and begin to wrap that and pull up as I go again only on the flat side on the upper rounded edge just like this I'm only tensioning that string when it's flat not when it's laying sideways there's three wraps there's four wraps and when I get down here It'll be time to put another bundle in. Uh, get another bundle of four stalks and get them evened up on the top. Just like that. feels a little thinner to me so I'm going to add one more in there. Those stalks are pretty small. I'm going to come around with my 45 
to match this other side. Remember only to pull it tight when you're at the top like this. Begin to wrap down. Get everything evened up. Give myself a little slack. Start to wind it down to get my four wraps. And now I'm ready to add in another bundle. So you can see I got one, two, three, four bundles in this broom right now. Add four more stocks on there. See how that lays. I put one more in there. So I would imagine this will be close to the last one before I start to wrap it up. Turn it over. Get my 45. Give myself a little slack. Again, I want to match these if I can. And keep this as flat as I can here. Now because this is the last bundle I'm going to put in, I can continue this wrap as high as I want to go to create a handle for this broom. So I'm going to wrap this until I've got about an inch and a half or two inches of wrap. Again I'm relaxing on the side, tensioning when it's upright. Now when I've got what I want for a handle on the top of this thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pull cord, which is just a piece of string, and I'm going to lay it in here underneath my wrap, just like this. And I'm going to put four to five wraps around that pull cord.
When I get to that point, I'm going to take out my mower knife and just cut my tail. Come around this last time and put that tail through that jerk -a loop or that pull loop right there. Hold it with my thumb. Grab a hold of that tail and pull it through just like that. Now I've got something that's not going to come undone. Now to finish this off, I'm going to get rid of this first tie right here. I'm going to get rid of this last tie right here. Then I'm going to carve this down. And I can do that with my knife just like this. And I just want to carve that thing off fairly even or fairly flat. I like a little bit of a crown there sticking up when I'm done. Kind of like that. And the reason they call this a turkey wing broom is if you take this thing and pull these individual bundles sideways like this, it kind of resembles a turkey wing. You let that thing dry out because right now it's soaking wet. We soaked all of this stuff for a couple hours like we said before we used it. And when it dries out, Iris will have herself a dandy hearth broom. So that's the way you make a turkey wing hearth broom with broom corn or sorghum. If you've got any ones sticking out like this one right here, you can trim those off with your mora. Just trim them even right there. You could come through if you've got areas that are long like this and you could trim it with a pair of scissors just to even it up and make it look neater. But a mora knife is a dandy tool to use for working on stuff like this that you're trying to do fine carving work to or you just got to cut cordage. I usually keep like a more carving knife around my neck when I'm working on this kind of stuff just for that reason. There we go. Well, I'm Dave Canterbury with Pathfinder School and I appreciate you guys joining me today for this video. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our instructors, sponsors, affiliates, and friends. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks guys.